Hi everyone, you know what time it is? It's time for the book of the month, St. Patty's Day style. Hi everyone, I'm Nancy and welcome back to my channel. Welcome to Book of the Month Club, St. Patty's Day style. So I actually had to dig out my green wig from my Halloween box. Yeah, thank you, Janet, for suggesting that. And I've got my bow tie that I used to wear when I attended bar, because I kept, kept some of my bow ties. And I've got a couple of these shirts, one for on the way up and wait, and one for on the way down and wait. So I've got this top on that I've had for a few years. Just supposed to be like a swashbuckling, maybe little Irish ten bartender, who knows. But anyway, going to have a little drink to start the day. So we have got... Well, it's not like six o'clock in the morning or anything, just to start the video. Yeah. So I've got my tippy cow. I haven't had these in a while, but so they were still in the refrigerator, still good. So this one is the chocolate tippy cow. And it's a chocolate rum cream from Wisconsin. And then the shamrock one. So this is the mint. So it'll be a chocolate mint. And I put it in my twisted, I saved these, these twisted shot glasses right here so you buy these and it's twisted shots and they come with like a liquor on one side flavor on the other all kinds of fun styles we used to do these at work sometimes on friday we would make a couple of rounds starting like at two two o'clock would go around and with some shot glasses and then at three and then four and then one to end the day so anyway i saved these and we washed them up and then we just started making our own yeah so anyway this one is a chocolate mint so we've got the mint on one side, the chocolate on the other. It's kind of hard to see in the camera, but this side is green for the mint, and then this one is brown for the chocolate. Alrighty. Cheers, everyone. Oh, happy St. Patty's Day. Happy Friday. Mm, that is so good. So creamy. I used to be able to do that in one shot, but oh well. Some things you just need to go easy on. But anyway, so I have got my book of the month club for the month of March. Oh my gosh, this was hard to do. I it was like, there was a couple of books that I wanted so bad. But, oh, you know, I picked one. I was, I was really good. I think we had seven different books to choose from this month. Last month, I think we had five. There are a couple in here that I hope someone else picked and lets me know if I need to add those to next month as an extra. But anyway, there's one in here, like the pirate, and it was like a pirate book. And I was like, did I want to get it because it sounded exciting? Or did I want to get it because it reminded me of Johnny Depp? I know, it's really a hard decision sometimes. But anyway, so for book, book of the Month Club, and I'll have my link below. It should get your first book for $5 if it's something that you wanted to do and you haven't done it before. After that, I believe it's $15 and change now. It does include shipping on that. And they give you several books to choose from every month. If none of those books excite you, you can always skip a month. Or sometimes they'll say they'll give you an alternate and maybe let you pick some other books. Other months they've let you pick from the whole vast library that they have. Sometimes they just offer a few so it does differ from time to time. But for $5 for your first book, that's pretty exciting. Of course, I mean, a lot of people like the Kindles now. I like a hardcover book. I just like a book. My hands. So anyway, let's get into the choices this month. Alrighty. So the first one is a magical realism. And it's called Wayward by Emily Hart. The quick take on this, it's an ode to the natural world and female power. The lush generation spanning novel is equal parts daring and inspiring. I am a wayward and wild inside. 2019, under cover of darkness, Kate flees London for ramshackle wayward cottage, inherited from her great aunt, that she barely remembers. With its tumbling ivy and overgrown garden, the guarded cottage is worlds away from the abusive partner who tormented Kate. But she begins to suspect that her great aunt had a secret, one that lurks in the bones of the cottage, hidden ever since the witch hunts of the 17th century, 1619. 
Alpha is awaiting trial for the murder of a local farmer who was stampeded to death by his herd. As a girl, Alpha's mother taught her her magic, a kind not rooted in spell casting, but in a deep knowledge of the natural world. But unusual women have always been deemed dangerous, and as the evidence for witchcraft is set out against Alpha, she knows it will take all her powers to maintain her freedom. 1942. As World War II rages, Violet is trapped in her family's grand crumbling estate. Straight-jacketed by societal convention, she longs for the robust education her brother receives. For her mother, long deceased, who was rumored to have gone mad before her death. The only traces Violet has are her locket bearing the initial W and the word wayward scratched into the baseboard of her bedroom. Weaving together the stories of three extraordinary women across five centuries, Emily Hart's Wayward is an enthralling novel of female resilience and the transformative power of the natural world. You know, I love books that span generations and incorporate a little bit of history. So this one was definitely one that was on my, should I get it? Should I not get it? Alrighty, the next one was a thriller. You know, I love thrillers. And it's called The Soulmate by Sally Hepworth. And when an old acquaintance dies, it dredges up demons of the past that threaten to unravel a seemingly perfect marriage. There's a cottage on a cliff, Gabe and Pippa's dream house in a sleepy coastal town, but their perfect house hides something sinister. The tall cliffs have become a popular spot for people to end their lives. Night after night, Gabe comes to the rescue, literally talking them off the ledge until he doesn't. When Pippa discovers Gabe knew the victim, the questions spiral. Did the victim jump? Was she pushed? And would Gabe, the love of Pippa's life, her soulmate lie? As the perfect facade, or that's not how you say it, but I know how to say it in real life, it just isn't coming out right, of the marriage begins to crack. The deepest and darkest secrets begin to unravel. This one just kind of reminded me of the widow's walk in dark shadows. I know. Can you just see the waves on that and how this opening of dark shadows were probably not all of you because you weren't alive then. But yeah, that's what that one reminded me of. It sounds like a good book. Didn't get it, but I'm thrillers. I love thrillers. I was definitely thinking about it. All right, next we have another historical fiction. It's called The Last Russian Doll by Kristen Loesch. The epic story weaves one's family's tragic splintering into the largest tapestry of Russia's turbulent 20th century. In a faraway kingdom, in a long ago land, a young girl lived happily in Moscow with her family, a sister, a father, and an eccentric mother who liked to tell fairy tales and collect porcelain dolls. Now a decade later and studying at Oxford University, Rosie has an English name, a loving fiance and a promising future. But all she wants is to understand and bury the past. After her mother dies, Rosie returns to Russia, armed with a little more than her mother's strange folklore and a single key. When she uncovers, what she uncovers is a devastating family history that spans the 1917 revolution, the siege of Leningrad, Stalin's purges, and beyond. At the heart of the saga stands a young noblewoman, Tanya, as pretty as a porcelain doll, whose actions and love for an idealistic man will set off a sweeping story that reverberates across the country. Again, this one's got some history in it. It sounded really exciting. Let me know if you guys got this book. Alrighty, 
So the next one is a contemporary fiction. It's called Rootless by Crystal Zara Apaya. An unexpected pregnancy pushes a married couple into a raw and emotional exploration of what it is that they truly want. On a spring afternoon in London, Sam hops the stairs of his flat two at a time. The 1,300 pounds is missing from his and his wife's elf, Effie's shared bank account, and his calls are going straight to her voicemail. When he finally reaches someone, he learns Effie is nearly 5,000 miles away as their toddler looks around and asks, Where's Mummy? When Effie and Sam met his teams headed for university, it seemed everyone knew that they were meant to be. Effie, newly arrived in the UK from Ghana and sinking under the weight of her parents' expectations, found comfort, comfort and focused in idealistic Sam. He was stable, working towards a law career, and had an unwavering vision for their future. A vision Effie, now a decade later, finds slightly insufferable. From the outside, they're the picture-perfect couple everyone imagined, but there are cracks in their frame. When Effie and Sam are faced with an unplanned pregnancy, they find themselves on opposing sides. Fatherhood is everything he dreamed of, and but Effie feels stuck in a nightmare. And when a new revelation emerges, they are forced to confront just how radically different they want their lives to be. Already swallowed by the demands of motherhood and feeling the dreams that is slipping away again, Effie disappears. Alrighty, so that one sounds intriguing. I don't think so much my cup of tea, but again, it does sound like an interesting choice. Alrighty, this one is the pirate story that had me... Do I want it? Because I want to think of Johnny Depp and the Pirates of the Caribbean. So that kind of washbuckling thing. It's the first in a series, which means if you like the book, there's going to be some more things to it. So if you got this book, I would love to hear your thoughts on it. Or anything by this author. I've never had anything by her. So it's a fantasy book. And it's The Adventures of Amina al Serafi, And it's by Shannon Chakraborty. So it's a swashbuckling pirate's captain's last hurrah that will have you clutching for your spyglass, ready to hit the high seas. Amina al Safari should be content. After a storied and scandalous career as one of the Indian Ocean's most notorious pirates, she survived backstabbing, rogues, venge vengeful merchant princes, several husbands, and one actual demon to retire peacefully with her family to a life of piety, motherhood, and absolutely nothing that hints of the supernatural. But when she's tracked down by the obscenely wealthy mother of a former crewman, she's offered a job no bandit could refuse. Retrieve her comrade's kidnapped daughter for a kingly sum. The chance to have one last adventure with her crew, do right by an old friend, and with a fortune that will secure her family's future forever. It seems like an obvious choice that it must be God's will. Yet, the deeper Amina d dives, the more it becomes alarmingly clear that there's more to this job and the girl's disappearance, and she is led to believe for there's the awkward risk of wanting to become a legend, to seize one last chance at glory, to savor just a bit more power, and the price must be your very soul. I know. Oh my God, this one just screams at me, movies, series, whatever, and being the first in the series, if you like this book, you know there's going to be some more to it. Let me know your thoughts. This one was a hard one to pass up. Alrighty. Next one's a horror, horror. You know, I love horror. So this one is Lone Woman by Victor Laval. The quick take is it's a disquieting story. A woman fleeing past sins attempts to forge a new life in homesteading Montana's harsh plains. Adelaide Henry carries an enormous steamer trunk with her whenever she goes. It's locked at all times. 
because when the trunk is opened, people around her start to disappear. The year is 1914 and Adeline is in trouble. Her secret sin killed her parents and forced her to flee her hometown of Redondo, California. In a hellfire rush, ready to make her way to Montana as a homesteader, dragging the trunk with her every step of the way. She will be one of the lone women taking advantage of the government offer of free land for those who can cultivate it. Except Adeline isn't alone and the secret she's tried so desperately to lock away might be the only thing keeping her alive. I want to get this book to know what the heck is she carrying in that trunk. Let me know if you've heard this book or read this book. I would love to know your thoughts on it. Alrighty, so the one that I chose, it's a gothic fiction. I had another gothic fiction, La Hacienda. Absolutely love that book. I even read passages during one of my reviews of it. I could not put that book down at certain points. Loved it. So this one, again, it's a gothic fiction. It's called The London Seance Society, and it's by Sarah Penner. From the author of Lost Apothecary, a gothic fable teeming with mystery and occult forces where none can be trusted. 1873, as an abandoned at an abandoned chateau on the outskirts of Paris, a dark seance is about to take place. Led by acclaimed spiritualist Baudelaire Valère, known worldwide for her talent in conjuring the spirits of murdered victims to ascertain the identities of the people who killed them. She is highly sought after by widows and investigators alike. Lena Wilkes has come to Paris to find answers about her sister's death, but to do so, she must embrace the unknown and overcome her own logic-driven bias against the occult. When Vaudeline is beckoned to England to solve a high-profile murder, Lena accompanies her as her understudy. But as the women team up with the powerful men of London's exclusive seance society to serve a mystery, they begin to suspect that they are not merely out to solve a crime, but perhaps entangled in one themselves. Again, you know, seances, things like that, since my dark shadow days, I've just always been interested in it. Is it true? Is it not true? Is it real? How much of it is true? There's obviously people that have the sixth sense that can see things and hear things. I've never really, well, you know, I did kind of experience something like that myself. Though I worked with a person back in 1976 and um, yeah, and he said he was a witch. Didn't really know for sure, but he said he was and he lived with one of the girls that was there and I was on my way to work one day and I have no idea what happened. I was going over a bridge and my Mustang just started spinning out of nowhere and I was flying backwards and right up over the curbing into the railing of the bridge and I was about to go down the embankment and bam the car stopped spinning, spinning the radio stopped everything just stopped and I was fine and I was a little shaken up it took me a while to compose myself because I was like shaken I was crying I didn't know what was going on and anyway made it to work and as I'm getting out of my car, running into work. The person that called himself the witch and his girlfriend came running out of the bu building and started hugging me and she was crying. And he said, I did all that I could do. I, I see, I helped you in time. True story. Tell me that does not give you the willies or something. Anyway, I remember that day so clear. I remember them running out to hug me and the crying and it just really unnerved me. So anyway, and then of course, Dark Shadows, they had the seances, whatever. So this book just spoke to me. I had to, had to get it. I cannot wait to read it. So anyway, you see these books behind me. This is the book I'm currently reading. I am almost done with The Circus Train. I think I've got maybe 
30 to 50 pages to go. I cannot wait to read to share this one with you. It's about a circus, a traveling circus, and World War II, things like that. And I forgot to hold up the book of the London Seance Society. So this is what this book looks like. I am looking forward to reading this. I had another book planned that I was going to read, but you know, when I finish the circus train, I'm going to read this. The book that I finished white horse this one was a horror story as well it wasn't exactly scary but i could see this being made into a movie with some special effects and you could turn this into a horror story so this is uh, about um a lady her name is carrie she's an indigenous she's indian i think she's apache and chickawa so it kind of brings in her local the folklore of uh, folklore of her Indian culture. She's not being raised as an Indian, but everyone of course knows she is. Her mother disappeared when she was like two days old. Um, her father was in a serious, serious accident shortly after that. He's been in like a vegetable state and she's his caretaker. Um, she also works two jobs to help pay the bills. Her father does not speak. He just, you know, he needs care. She loves Stephen King movies. There's lots of references to Stephen King in here. She even spends a couple of nights at the hotel in Colorado where The Shining was filmed. There's ghost tours of there as well. Um, she's a hard rocker. She hangs out at a bar called The White Horse that's kind of like falling apart behind her. Her best friend is her cousin who's in a very abusive, narcissistic relationship. So Carrie and her cousin Debbie's husband bit, bought heads a lot. Debbie loves her friend. She's taken care of her for forever, you know, when she was old enough after her mother disappeared because she's a few years older. Carrie's haunted by visions of her best friend growing up who died of a drug overdose. She was in that same kind of crowd doing drugs, drinking, partying, going out with all kinds of men to get things. And her friend died during one of those days that haunts her to this day. But anyway, her, her I guess it's her aunt or her cousin Debbie comes across one of her mother's bracelets. And it's supposed to be steeped with tradition. And of course, this Indian folklore just kind of plays right into it. And she, Debbie wants nothing to do, not Debbie, but Carrie wants nothing to do with her mother. She has hated her mother every day of her life, knowing that her mother disappeared when she was two years old. And uh, yeah, so as soon as she touches this bracelet, she starts getting visions. She's getting visions of her mother. She's all bloodied. She's dripping blood everywhere. She's getting strange messages. And there's this creature, this hairy creature that she describes as smelling like raw meat and things like that. And then it's chasing her and it's, it bites her sometimes when it catches her. She's on a Ferris wheel and the monster's right behind her. She's got nowhere to go. Her visions take her to different places to seek out information that she's kind of wants to know what happened to her mother, but she's just in the back of her head thinking her mother just opted out and ran away with someone. She finds out she has grandparents that she never met. Her grandmother's eager to talk to her, but kind of held back because of her husband that wants nothing to do with her. And it just goes back and forth and are her visions real? She finds out that her grandfather says her, her grandmother doesn't really see those visions. She's delusional. She's has delusions her whole life. Don't trust anything she says. She hears a story, but her mother was into this, um, the Indian getting their rights and things like that. And, and FBI is involved and undercover. And was she, a, was it a hit from the FBI or the government? And so it just kind of goes around in full circles. And again, just uh, the music in here, she's a hardcore rocker and whatever, and she hangs out at the bar called the White Horse that she wants to buy, but she doesn't know she should. So many things in here. It was a great read. I thoroughly, thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed this. And of course, I love Stephen King, his movies as well. So bringing The Shining into this was just really a nice, nice mix, really really enjoyed this book. So anyway, that is it. And again, I went overboard again, but anyway, I want to thank you guys so much for taking a few minutes out of your day or a couple of hours out of your day. 
I appreciate it so much. It's St. Patty's Day. I got my green wig on here from, I got this, I got this last Halloween. I'm, I'm loving it. And of course I got my shot glass here with my St. Patty's Day drink. I hope everyone goes out, has a fabulous, fabulous night, whether you're having corned beef and cabbage or hot cross buns or Irish bread or whatever you like, green beer. I was actually thinking of grating some green dye and putting it in my Moscato, but you know, I started for this instead. So anyway, take care, everyone stay safe, be kind, be happy, be, be happy, be healthy, enjoy life, have some fun. Take care everyone, I love you guys so much and we will see you in our next video.